going to click the stream to that. All right. Let's see here. YouTube is live. Let's see if we can get the Instagram to work. And the Instagram is Instagramming. Just like that, huh? Just like that. Just a few buttons and boom, we're going out to the interwebs. <clears throat> so just making sure everything is working. Hello, everybody that is out in the interwebs land. We have Dick Dyer and Dies by Red. Nice. Yay. So we'll get this off and started. So this is a free dye clinic. And uh, Jillian, I forgot what he says, like Die Time Live. Time Live. This is Die Time Live. That made me think of like um, Home Improvement, Tool Time. Tool Time. Tool. It's I was die... Lime I was Time Live. Yeah, Die Time Live <laughs> with Dave, the disc dyer, and Jillian from Happy Tree Dyes. But anyways, this is live. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to shoot a chat message. I'll be the MC here. And Jillian from Happy Tree Dyes will be teaching you how to dye some amazing stuff. Uh, and today we're gonna learn how to do what she does, which is the drip dyeing. Um, so yeah, Jillian, hi, we'll let you take it away. <laughs> All right, yeah, um, I'm Jillian with Happy Tree Dyes. Um, thanks Dave for having me on today. Um, I am located just um, in Southern Indiana in New Albany, um, just about as far south in Indiana as you can go, just right outside of Louisville, Kentucky. Um, I've been dying for about four years now and two years full time. Um, my main dying space is actually out of the store that I work. It's a it's a disc golf retail store that I work out of, and that's where I do all of my dying. So um, today we're gonna go over. Oh, well, there was more. Today we're gonna go over <laughs> um, how I do my my drip style dye. It's one of my most popular designs, and I'm just going to go through that step by step. Um, and I will be using the gold kit from Dyer's Guild, which you can get online. Yes. So if you go to dyersguild.co, you can definitely get that kit. <laughs> yes. Dave has curated a kit uh, specifically for the drip. It comes with the stencil and everything, so... Um, if you're if you're not following along today and you want to try it later on, um, all you really have to do is go get that kit and you're you're good to go. So, so yeah, um, I guess I'll get right into it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so again, if you guys have any questions throughout the process, uh, just shoot a chat message and I'll be the MC and read that off while uh, Jillian does does her magic. All right. Awesome. Switch <clears throat> this over or try to. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, doing it. All right. All right. Hold on. I got I got it in my plate. I'm missing something. Can't miss a plate. <laughs> so again, if you guys have any, any questions throughout the process, shoot a message. We'll answer them live. As Jillian would say, die time live. All right. What is that thing? Is that like a, a food plate? Yeah, so um I was gonna use the pan that comes in the kit. Mm -hmm. Um it's way nicer than this plate actually. <laughs> so it comes with this really neat pan, but um just for the purposes of the video, the white helps uh just to be able to see what I'm doing better. So Right I actually picked these up at the Dollar Tree. They're, uh, I think, a dollar for two. They're microwavable plates. Oh, nice. Yeah, I've seen you use a lot of plates in your uh, in-person classes. Yes, they're really lightweight and they're easier to travel with, too. Mm. And I can actually fit six of them in my dehydrator. Because mm. they're really shallow as well. So... For anybody who's following along, um, the first step of any dye that you're doing, doesn't matter what it is, is going to be to clean off the disc. Um, it's really important to get, even if it's a new disc, to get the 
the residue off from the factory. A lot of the times there's like a oil left. I think they call it release agent on even brand new discs that can affect your dyeing. So um, you'll notice if you get a kit from the Dyers Guild, it comes with a sponge and you'll just use that with dish soap to get that residue off before you start dyeing. So I've already done that part, but if you're following along and need to go do that, now's the time. All right. Our next step is just gonna be to, um, well, we'll do the stencil part first. All right. So I'm gonna show you guys how to apply a stencil. So this is what the drip stencil is gonna look like um, if you get it in the kit or if you have got the digital file, you can go print it off and it'll look something like this. Uh, I'll show you how to, as Dave would say, apply it the wrong way, <laughs> which is without transfer tape. So this is just black. Um, I use Oracle 651 in the matte black. So, is that hard to see on the table? Nope. Okay. Good to go. Sweet. Okay. So, you'll peel it off just like a sticker and have it sticky side up. And then I'll be dyeing a Star Destroyer today. So, um, when you have a disc that doesn't have a stamp and is just completely blank like this one, you're not too worried about the orientation of the drips. Um, I just kind of place it. You can decide like how far up you want the drips or how, how far down you want them. Um, I just kind of put my thumbs in the middle. And if I move it like that, I can see those bottom drips kind of there at the bottom. I'm gonna go for like a halfway point. Um, and then you'll just lay it down on the final. So why don't you use transfer paper slash tape on this stencil? Um, just to save transfer tape, honestly. <laughs> uh, it's just a really simple stencil and it doesn't really need it. Um, there's no, what I like to call like island pieces. Yeah. Pieces that like aren't connected to the, the bigger piece of vinyl. So I just do it like this because it's not. Sometimes I will if I want to place the drips like really precisely or if I'm keeping part of a stamp and I want to make sure the drips are orientated a certain way. Mm -hmm. um, I'll use the transfer tape, but on a blank, I'm, I'm not I'm not super concerned about it. So I wasn't the smartest because when I try to do this with the transfer tape because of my way of placing the vinyl on top of the disc, it was a little bit more difficult. <laughs> so yeah. if you do it without transfer tape, something simple like this, do it this way. It'll be much, much easier, even though it's the wrong way. <laughs> See, I would say like 90% of the time I will put the vinyl, even if there's transfer tape, I'll put it on the table and then set the disc on that. <laughs> okay. You do you. I know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we've got it flipped over, and um, this comes in the kit as well. It's a little squeegee with felt on the end of it. Um, I'll use this, but you can also use, if you don't have this, um, like a credit card or like the back of your fingernail. Um, and you're going to want to press um, the vinyl down really well around the edges specifically. This is one of the things that came in the kit that I've used like every day since I got it. Oh, nice. <laughs> I didn't realize how much of a convenience it would be. 
What, what were you using before? Usually my debit card, and then <laughs> <laughs> and then I would I would I've literally left it on my diet table so many times and like gone out and not had it and I couldn't buy something. So right, this is really this has really been a great game changer for me, Dave. Yes, multiple reasons. <laughs> uh, one is not valuable, so. <laughs> All right, so I'm going in and I'm really focusing on just like the very edge of the of the stencil where the vinyl meets the disc. You're not really concerned about the bubbles that are further back, like in this kind of area. But if they're right up next to that line, you're going to want to push them out using your squeegee or your debit card or whatever you have. <laughs> Um, it's really easy if you have a blank disc, but if you're uh, using one that you've wiped the stamp and it still has the grooves in it from the like indention from the from the old stamp, um, I've started using a heat gun on the vinyl to kind of help the help the vinyl get into those grooves and prevent bleeds on the stamp. Someone, our, yeah, Dick Dyer commented, I've used all the PGA membership cards. That's a good use for them. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Yes. Anything but your debit card, really. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. That looks pretty good. So, I don't see any bubbles near the edge. Looks pretty smooth. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and wrap the excess around. So that's all good to go. Do we have anybody who's following along so that I'm not going too fast? <laughs> I'll wait for the comments to roll in, but I don't think so. Um, but yeah, for the stencil, what you see in white is what's going to be dyed, and the black part is masking off the disc, so that will be left white. So it's kind of, yes. kind of reversed. So it would look like that to give you a kind of a visual. All right. So on to our next step. Now the plate. So now we're going to make our glue bed. So you'll be doing the clear glue technique for the disc, right? Yes, clear glue uh, with the acetone mixes. Oh, I was going to show you how to mix one. So the kit comes with this handy dandy formula sheet. Um, so you know how to mix everything. We're going to be doing the clear glue here. So I've mixed up most of my colors, but I just wanted to show you guys how to mix one. Um, so, Yeah, and that formula chart is, it's a recommendation. Obviously, you can adjust as needed. Right. I'm because... going to do a bit of adjusting. <laughs> 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 so we're going to mix up some pansy today. I'm excited. I've actually never used pansy. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah. A nice purple. What do you usually use for purple? I've got neon purple and I've got lilac and uh fuchsia. What um there was a purple that I had issues with that was like really clumpy and clear glue. What color was that? Clumpy, you... huh? Um was it a pro cam? Yeah, it was a purple. Like pro cam has like a billion purples, but I can't remember. Uh I don't, I must not have ever used that one. Yeah, I, I wish I knew the name, but anyways, continue. Yes, you guys are not gonna believe how easy this is. So the formula is a half a teaspoon for every two ounces. This is a two ounce bottle. This is half a teaspoon. We're just gonna 
dump that bad boy right in there. This is where I'm going to deviate. It says to add a teaspoon of hot water. Um, I've never done that. I'm not going to start today. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just that you dump the powder in and then I have, well, I have an open acetone somewhere. Yeah. I feel like the water, it helps get the good saturation. I think it helps more so with the neon colors. In my experience. I, I agree. I think so too. Yeah. Um, so then I've got a hundred percent acetone. Um, just make sure if you, when you go out and get it, that it's a hundred percent acetone. Sometimes when you get nail polish remover, it has other, um, other stuff in there to help strengthen your nails and stuff. And we don't want any of that. We just want the pure acetone. Yes. So I'm just going to pour that right in there. So someone asks, or Josh asks, what's the benefit of glue versus troll? Oh, it's, well, tomatoes, tomatoes, they're like two yeah. completely different styles. Um, yeah. You can get a lot of different effects with glue that you can't get with Floetrol and vice versa, I would say. Yeah, so I agree. Two ingredients, we're shaking it up. And that's it. We're good to go. And is that press and seal that you put on the plate? Yes. Nice. Yep. Just for easy cleanup. Yes, I do that with everything. Yeah, that was a game changer as well. <laughs> I don't like cleaning plates out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got our plate. Um, and I prefer for clear glue. I like the, the colorations glue. Um, some glues are a little bit more watery than others, and I just like the consistency of, of this one, but any clear glue you can find will work. Where do you get the colorations from? Um, shoot, what's that website? It's, um, it's like a school website. I can't think of it right now off the top of my head. I haven't ordered it in a while. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I forget it too as, as well. It's like wow. school, school supply something or depot. So somebody yeah. will, somebody will know. Yes. Um, and we do have a link on the Dyers Guild website, dyersguild.co slash supplies, where you can get and find all the supplies as well. If you want to get that exact colorations, clear glue. Discount school supply. Moogly there says. you go. Yep. Yes. Before I get it. <laughs> they, I think they have the best prices on it that I've found so far, but if somebody knows where I can get it cheaper, <laughs> just let me know. <laughs> All right, so um, the main thing I think with with this is you want to avoid bubbles in your clear glue bed. Um, I don't really have to worry about that as much because I've had this glue sitting around for a long time and there's no bubbles in it currently. Um, so I just have to be really careful when I pour it. You kind of pour it like it's a beer, <laughs> to be honest. Like, like if <laughs> like if your plate is a glass and, and you're like pouring, you wanna you wanna like go at the edge and just kind of do a really steady pour down the edge of the plate. You don't want to have a foamy head. Yeah, you don't want that with your glue. <laughs> Interesting. Um, I've always poured it from the center, but I've never done it like that, which is it makes it, sense. Yeah. It, it, I don't know. I've always done it that way. And you can tell there's there are zero bubbles in this bed at all. I've never mm -hmm. owned a torch, so I don't, I don't oh, do wow. that. Really? Yep. Fascinating. Okay. So I've got some colors here. So what colors are you going to be using today? So today we've got, we've got the pansy that we just mixed. Um, Sonic blue. It's probably my favorite blue. Mm. Um, shamrock. 
which is one of their newer colors, which I really, really like. Um, dandelion, solid color. And then one of their newer ones, Creamsicle. Nice. What's your favorite Pro Chem color? Um, I've been really liking the new colors, like Shamrock and Creamsicle. Like the Shamrock, I love that green. Creamsicle, I love that orange. Yeah, I've been really digging the Shamrock too. I feel like that's something they were missing. It's just like a mm -hmm. a good green. Yeah, we were testing a, literally all fifty colors from Pro Chemical and Dye to see what to put in the kits that made the most sense, and those were the ones. Nice, solid choices. All right, I'm supporting the Dyers Guild with my uh, my <laughs> fan. I don't know if you noticed that. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so do you like to use your mixes that fast after you mix the new mix? Like, have you noticed any difference between waiting or doing it like five minutes? <laughs> it has been so long since I did a new mix. Uh, we're going to, we're going to find out together. <laughs> it's an experiment. <laughs> yeah. I, when I get low, I typically just, um, I just add, a little more powder and a little more acetone and, and i've just been doing that for a while so nice. hopefully it turns out do you recommend waiting you know i don't know i believe waiting helps because then all the excess sediment or dye sediment gets to the bottom so it's not going to be in there um but we'll literally find out <laughs> yeah pretty much with the pansy yes. these i just did uh well, I'm a procrastinator, so I did it like 15 minutes before the class. So, <laughs> right on. All right. So, we're going to start out with just um, lines of color going across the bed. Um, it's the only thing I would really say is A, be sure you're not pulling the dye off the, the bottom. Um, like Dave said, there's unmixed dye at the bottom of these bottles, and that's totally normal. It's just sediment down there, um, and it's, it's going to be down there no matter what you do. I know a lot of people get worried about that, but it's completely normal. Um, when you just pull your dye, make sure you're pulling it from the top, and don't put your dropper like all the way down to the bottom of the bottle. Yes, had that happen multiple times teaching classes. People just go, Pfft. like, no, yeah. no, no. <laughs> yeah, same. Oh, the other thing, thanks for reminding me, um, mm -hmm. that has happened when... I've done glue bed classes is um, you, you want to make sure that your dropper is always vertical like this. You don't want to tilt it at all horizontally because the dye will just kind of like pour out. Yes. So I think a lot of people have the tendency to want to, once they've laid their color to tilt it like this mm -hmm. um, and, and dye will just come pouring out of the dropper. So make yes. sure that no matter what you're doing, it's always vertical. I've had that happen a few times as well. It's just a, just pretend you're a claw machine. Pick it up, move it over, put it down. Oh, I like that. I'm going to start using that. <laughs> the claw machine thing. Yes, I believe uh, Mr. Horner Austin was the first person to come up with this. Like, oh, okay, neat. It makes a lot of sense. So I would say if it's your first time doing it, um, maybe practice. Um, you want to kind of control the number of drips that you can put on a bed. So maybe kind of practice over the bottle of just like letting one drop out so that you're comfortable with like the amount of pressure they need to put on the dropper to make that happen. You don't want to like squeeze too hard and, you know, mess up your design. So I would sit and practice over it a bit. Um, but after you're good with that, I would just start putting your your lines down. So I'm gonna get some pansy and I'm gonna start on the on this side and go across. So it doesn't matter how much dye that you actually put down on the glue bed. There's enough dye there and it's going to be fully saturated. Yeah, I found that basically a good amount too, because like 
more than that, it really doesn't do much besides just spread it around. Yeah, and then if you put too much, it starts to it starts to get weird. Yeah. I can do it just so so we can see. So the other thing um, is when you're putting a color down, um, if you don't want it to mix or blend with the color that you're putting next to it, you want to wait until the first color is completely, uh, the acetone has completely evaporated. But yeah, you, and you can, I was going to say, you can kind of see when it has been evaporated. Like when you first lay it down, you look at it, it just changes kind of uh, texture. I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, it's a weird thing, but it only takes a few seconds. Yeah. So I'm going to go in with the blue and you'll be able to see how the blue kind of butts up right next to the pansy, but they don't really blend together. Have you noticed any colors mix even when you do let it dry? Uh, yeah, a few off the top of my head. Um, I don't know. What colors do you think do that? Ah, uh, I I don't know either. We're we're very helpful. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Some I've colors noticed, mix, but we don't know which ones. When I used to use the the worm dip a lot, like that was mm. really weird on glue pads. Yeah. It's like chunky on the top. So yeah, but I'll show you if you want them to like if you wanted these two colors to blend a little bit, you would just have to lay it down and quickly lay down the other color. So I'm gonna go in with the pansy. It's not dry, and then I'm gonna go in with the sonic, and you can see how they blend together. Do you have any rhyme or reason to what colors you put next to each other? Uh, for sure. Um, with this, it doesn't matter a whole lot, but, um, if you're wanting to do a lot of the, like the blending, uh, just make sure there are colors that, uh, you don't mind the color that they're going to mix to be. <laughs> so yeah. no two colors next to each other. That'll make Brown unless you want Brown. I don't know. Maybe you do. So knowing your color wheel is pretty important as well. So you don't get browned and find the colors that work well next to each other. S Boy, that shammer kind of spread weird. Yeah. Yeah, they got a lot, of, a lot of stuff over here. I'm just going to go over it with the yellow. Maybe we'll get like a lime green or something. Yeah. And then another thing I do, which I, I think might be kind of weird, like to keep it from spreading, I'll just like blow, I'll blow on it. <laughs> No, yeah. If you you can get the acetone to evaporate faster that way. Yeah, definitely. It definitely is an art form to uh, you know if you want them to mix or not mix and how fast and how much and it, it's hard to describe. You just kind of have to do it and go by feel sometimes. Definitely. So that looks pretty good. Um, let's say doing this, it's it got a little bit of a glare. When you do this, it's best to use um, like four or five colors usually. Oh, you know what I don't have? I don't have a skewer. I'm just going to use the back of a paintbrush. All right. The next step to get this kind of like braided pattern is uh, get something like a skewer or something pointy. And um, I'm just gonna go in the same direction of these stripes, um, top to bottom, all the way across. I'm kind of like, I kind of want to blend the colors together as I go across. Um, I don't think I've ever done it that way first. I think I've always went across the colors. Interesting. 
Yeah, it definitely works that way. Um, I just like to get more of a, yeah. like a blendy kind of effect with them. Does the diameter of the device that you're skewing with matter? Like if you have something that's like a thick dowel? Uh, I don't know. It might, it might blend them together um, a little more. Yeah. Could try it. It's always fun and, to try stuff. Yeah. And when you did that, you didn't lift it up. You just kept uh, kept it in the glues moving it around. Yeah. I just went in um, and just willy-nilly all the way across it zigzag so willy-nilly that's a funny word willy -nilly. <laughs> i like that i use it all the time <laughs> <laughs> all right so now um we're gonna go against the grain so we're gonna go this way and i'm going to um still gonna use my paintbrush uh but i'm gonna go from left to right and then I'm going to alternate and go from right to left and left to right. And I'm going to leave about, I don't know, a quarter inch or half inch space between everything. So I'll start on this side and go across. Against the grain. That's such a woodworker term. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Fun fact, if you didn't know, Jillian is a woodworker. I am. Not recently, just because it's mm. so cold in the garage. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I got that, and then I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go from right to left. Dying to Fly Disc says he did notice a difference with uh, a larger diameter versus a small diameter. Oh, cool. Yeah, I guess we'll find out. Usually at work, I have these, um, or I have these metal skewers. I just, they're not right in front of me, and the paintbrush was, so that's what we're mm. rolling with today. Today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the larger diameter... I don't know, displaces slash moves it more. Yeah, that makes sense. So, I mean, you could like wipe off the paintbrush after each swipe too, uh -huh. but I'm not too concerned about it. So why do you go back and forth versus like doing all one direction than the other direction? Um, I like the pattern that it gives. Um, mm. It'll give you this nice kind of feathered pattern. But I mean, yeah, you could go all in one direction. That'd be a whole different, whole different pattern. Well, I'm saying like, uh, do your all your rows going right, then go in between them and go left instead of like oh. zigzagging back and forth. I, I don't know. It's always fun watching other people do this because, you know, they do it. Yeah, that's how you do it? You do them all in one direction and then go between? Uh, I don't think I've actually done this specific pattern before, but in my <laughs> head, that's that would have been my process. Okay. All but, right. But I really do like that feather pattern. I like the, uh, the really thin lines, you know, the wispy lines in there. Yeah. So this would be a really cool pattern just by itself. You could drop a disc in there, um, and that would be that would be pretty sweet. Um, but I'm gonna take it take it one step further and get the the braided look. Um, I am going to turn the bed 90 degrees because I think that's gonna be easier. So I'm gonna do just that exact same thing again, um, but going. I guess again against the grain. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to go um, left to right in the center. I do always do the center first. I don't know. I don't know why. That's also another thing. I would have started from like the uh, top or bottom. I don't know. So I'm going to start from the center and then I'm going to, just like I did a second ago, um, alternate back across this way. These colors do look a bit lighter, and I wonder if it's because I didn't let it sit. Curious to see how the final disc will look. Yeah. 
someone commented, I feel the larger diameter skews skewer drag more color along with them as well. Yeah. Confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there we go. So we got a braided pattern here. You can see. Nice. All right, now we're ready for our disc. Oh, she's, I lost it. Okay, here's the <laughs> <lost> it. <laughs> And it's gone. <laughs> and we're going to do another one. That's good. Um, so ready for uh, to put the disc in the bed. Um, I like to do it this way where, it, I don't know, it kind of looks like the colors are mm. going down, like in the direction of the drips. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do it like that. Um, the way I hold the disc is with my thumbs like this, but it might be easier to use more fingers like this, whichever is more comfortable for you. The main thing when you're putting a disc in a bed is you don't want to go flat down with the table. You don't want it to be parallel with the table. You want to go in at like a 45 degree angle and it helps push any would be bubbles out. So you don't end up with little white spots all over your disc. Um, it's not as bad with like domey discs, but with flat top discs, uh, you can have spots where the dye never actually touches your disc and you get these white spots from yeah. bubble. So, um, so this is going to be 90 degrees, um, but we're going to go in at like 45 just to where the disc is just barely touching the die. And then I'm just gonna slowly lower it down flat. And once I get it in the bed, I'm just gonna let it float. I'm not gonna push it down there too much. I don't think it really matters a whole lot, but yeah. I feel like once it touches the disc, it is set. It's not mm -hmm. moving. Like I, I mentioned this before, I accidentally kind of dropped a disc in there and I lifted it completely out and I put it back down and it was fine. <laughs> yeah, when I first started dying, I was like so concerned after I put it in the bed, like I would pick it up and like nervously try to like put it over <laughs> on a yeah. shelf, but I don't think it really matters that much. RY guy dies asks any advantages slash disadvantages of doing a shallow or deeper bed. Oh, that's a good question. I guess I'm going to say no with glue beds. I, with flow trial beds, you would potentially, if you use a deeper bed, be able to reuse it more times. But, um, with glue, I guess all you're really concerned about is you don't want it to bottom out. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. And uh, trying to use as less medium is beneficial for multiple reasons. One, obviously cost. And uh, two, the environment, obviously. And speaking of that, do you reuse your glue? Yeah, sometimes I do at the at the store. I have a big old jug that I pour it all back into. Um. I don't like to a lot with designs where I use a lot of negative space. Mm, yeah. Um, just because I've noticed some of the color still comes through sometimes. So if I'm doing like a, something that's half and half where the disc is showing, um, I'll use new glue. But if I'm doing something that it's the top is fully covered, um, I'll use my, my old glue. It kind of depends. Yeah. Emily says deeper glue beds can sometimes pull dye to the bottom of the pad instead of the disc. Huh. Interesting. I mean, I, I guess it makes sense. It does. And 
Dick Dyer said, Floatrol smears if you move it, which yes, it does. Yeah, definitely more than glue. Yeah. So are you more careful when you uh, move your Floatrol beds, like after you put it in? I try to put, when I do Floatrol, I try to put the disc in the Floatrol where it's going to be to, oh. to bake. <laughs> so I don't have to move it. Oh, nice. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a lot more careful with those. Um, so now I'm going to go over how I do the um, the shadow, the drop shadow. So before you do that, question on the clear glue bed. How long do you let the bed sit for and do you use heat? Good question. Um, I do use heat. Uh, you don't have to. You can just let it sit for 24 to... 48 hours probably even longer i've actually let them set for unintentionally for almost a week <laughs> <laughs> and didn't see any uh any like bad results from it but uh but yeah room temp for 24 hours is is a safe bet um maybe like 30 36 hours for harder plastics like champ or yeah uh, but yeah have you noticed what i would call ghosting on your edges of clear glue Kind of like how a shaving cream burst is where it just like there's a slight ghost i don't know how to explain it but yeah yeah i know exactly what you're talking about um that does happen on the ones where i leave a lot of negative space um and i think those you have to be more specific on the on the timing so what do you think causes that i'm not sure maybe just the longer sit it just starts to it, the, the die just starts to move. I'm not yeah. really sure. That, that would be my thought as well. But heat, heat in general with dyeing is your friend. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'll just pop this in the... I have a dehydrator, so I'll put it in there for 110 for two hours, and it'll be good to go. Yes, and uh, I'm impatient, so uh, the disc, when I put mine in the dehydrator, is roughly about 125 degrees. That's the disc temperature. And I let it set for 45 minutes. So I did a bunch of experimentation and 45 minutes was like the least amount of time with like the best saturation for that time. Go. That's awesome. Um, yeah, especially without a stamp, you could probably stand to, to raise the temp and lower the time. Um, yes. Stupid stamps. Yeah. <laughs> Typically when I do them, I'll do like batches. So I'll, I'll throw them in the dehydrator and, um, the two hour time's good for me. Cause it gives me time to start something else or do something like a stencil or something that I'm working on. And then, um, by the time I'm done with that, it'll beep and then I'm good to clean those off. So. Yeah. I think we answered this, but Dick Dyer asked, do you use longer heat times for champion type of plastics? Yeah, definitely. Um, the harder the plastic, the longer the time, I would say, just in general. What about like glow plastic, say MVP Eclipse? Yeah, glow plastics too, um, I would say give, get closer to that like 36, 48 hour mark even for those. Or in the dehydrator, maybe like add another 30 minutes or so. Yeah. All right. Can't hurt. So, through the I did this one earlier. I feel like this is one of those like through the magic of television. Where... <laughs> yes. And here so, is a fully cooked turkey. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, um, just pretend I went and, and wiped that off. Um, then when you pull it up, you you're just gonna clean it off with um, hot water, really hot water, and uh, I usually use a um, what are they called? Magic eraser and dish soap um usually you'll have some crusties especially like around the edge yeah and you need to scrub those off especially if you use heat you'll get the crusty boogers on the edge mm -hmm. uh, emily said don't your discs have ghost edges i think because they don't have the same pressure applied to the glue surface but not positive i mean that makes sense because it's pushing the glue out because it is so domey yeah true that well this is something else i do um so you can see on this one where there's like, this is like me being picky, but see how there's like little spots where it didn't, mm -hmm. 
it didn't die and it's like on the very edge. I like the edges to be super sharp. So I'll go in with a Q-tip and like touch those up before I even peel the vinyl. Yeah. And if you do hate bubbles, you can touch it up and literally no one would notice at the touch up. Yeah. We uh we did like a huge bubble touch up that no one noticed. <laughs> uh let's see. Mark Mar C C C. Are the temperatures you're talking in Fahrenheit? Yes, we use the freedom units, the Fahrenheit's. <laughs> let's see. Uh C B Dap says, could you leave it in for only two hours if you're using heat lamp? Or is a time frame just for the dehydrator? It's really any heat. Um we like to use the dehydrator because it's a more consistent heat. Uh, with the heat lamp, you, when you're starting out the heat lamp, make sure you check your temperatures regularly so that it's even heat and you're not overheating your disc. But yeah, same temperatures basically, or uh, same times for dehydrator and heat lamp if you're using the same like disc temperature. Yes, heat is heat no matter how you're doing it. You just need to know your temps basically. <laughs> yes, I mean... You can use the sun if you want, or the inside of your car. Just be careful. We don't condone any of that. I used to. I used to, with my glue beds, I used to just sit <laughs> out on the, on the back deck when it was like 100-something degrees outside. Nice. So, so yeah, I'm going to take a Q-tip, and I'm just going to... We're just going to do a little touchy up there. And you're just using the same acetone mixture? Yeah. This isn't even the same color, but I feel like Pansy's probably close enough. Yeah, right. It's, <laughs> it's a blend of different colors, so yeah. Yeah. All right, that's probably that's probably good. Are you gonna clean that portion up after you do that at all? Gonna do what? Are you gonna clean what you just did up with like soap and water or whatever, anything else? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it should be fine. Um, I'll clean it off at the end though. Uh, Dick Dyer is asking, which blue is on that disc? Um, I think it is the new, the Aqua from Broken. Gotcha. I love that. It's kind of like between Aquatic and Caribbean for, for glue beds. It's, I feel like that was a color they were missing too. I really love the Aqua. Like... All the new colors I have, but I haven't used like Wineberry, Royal, Sky Blue. <laughs> I haven't used them yet. The only one I didn't really care about was uh, Concord, I think. Like that mm. grape color. Yeah. And normally I'll use like a heat gun and like heat the vinyl up. Mm -hmm. And it makes it easier to take off but my heat gun's on the other side of the room so we're just gonna power through it and uh we do have all 50 colors and sample packs on the dyer's guild website so you can get aqua today <laughs> <laughs> uh, what vinyl did you use this is oracle 651 the best vinyl i personally agree um again i feel like it can be a personal preference. And I also feel like it's also where you live in the environment and also making sure you get legit Oracle 651, not like some knockoff stuff, which I think people have gotten and been having issues with. All right, so that's pretty good. Um, so now I'm gonna mix up my, uh, my like shadow mixture. I don't know, that's what it is now. Yeah. Uh, with the vinyl, when you're peeling stuff up, have you had any issues with like any uh, adhesive residue? Sometimes I do. Yeah, even with the Oracle, um, I do feel like using, like I said earlier, the heat gun to heat it up before I peel it. I think that helps with decreasing the amount of adhesive. Mm. Um, but I think it really depends on the plastic. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that does make sense about the plastic. Um, 
one way that I found to remove the vinyl is using the vinyl that you took off and kind of sticking it on, taking it off, sticking it on, taking it off. That helps get the excess vinyl off as well. <clears throat> and I also personally use uh, Goo Gone if, it, if I can't get it off that way. That's an excellent tip. I've never used the vinyl itself to like pull the adhesive off, but that makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, like just uh, if you use, if you like even any other sticker, if you have like the residue on, doing that method gets that off. So you're going to be doing the basically drop shadow and what mixture are you using for that? So this is the the black that I use. It doesn't really matter what black you use. Um, I think, what do you have in the in the kit? Is it? Onyx. Oh, okay, yeah. So Onyx. Um, so you would use Onyx or whatever black you have, the Dark Dungeon or the Eye Dye or whatever you use. Um, and I should just actually make a bottle of this, but for some reason, every time I mix it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just 50-50, um, my black glue bed mixture. And uh, this is... It says it's nail polish remover, but it's actually just denatured alcohol. Huh. And so, your black and your black mixture is the pure acetone mixture. Yep. So I'm just kind of watering it down with the denatured alcohol, and I'm going for like a 50-50. And I'll adjust it because it kind of depends on the plastic too. Mm, yeah. That's probably why I mix it every time. <laughs> I mean, that does make sense. Yeah. So when we apply the shadow, we're going to try to put it where, uh, where you know, an actual shadow would be. So I'm going to pretend like the light source is, because I have like an X. This is an F2, and there's like, you can see where the X is. So yes. I'm going to try to cover that with a shadow. <laughs> so I'm going to pretend that the light source is like up at the top left, and it's shining this way. Right. So I'm just going to apply the shadow where real shadows would be. So I'm going to go like, at the bottom of the drip and then to the right hand side. And this is just a regular Q-tip. Uh, is there like a reason the like, I was going to say, is there a reason why you like Q-tips versus paint brushes or something else? Yes. The Q-tips I think are, I don't know, there's easier for me. A paintbrush would totally work though. And I, it might be a little softer than a paintbrush and just easier to handle for me personally. That's uh, also interesting that you have that cotton swab to your right that you dabbed it on. Oh yeah, we can talk about that. Um, I, did, <laughs> I didn't <laughs> want the, the cotton swab to be completely saturated. Uh -huh. um, just, just so it wouldn't like drip off of the disc or drip on there. So I just kind of dab it on the, the cotton swab to get the excess dye off. And I don't, that's like a little too dark for me. So I'm going to add a little bit more um, denatured alcohol just to lighten it up a bit. I don't want to get too ahead, but do you do multiple passes or do you like to do one pass? Yeah, I'm lightening it up because I like to do multiple passes on it. Mm. I like to start light and then kind of layer it. Gotcha. It's still a little too dark for me. Have you had any issues when doing that, that you pull in uh, the other colors? Not yet. I, I keep it pretty light, so. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's pure ass too. Yeah, I think I tried doing shading with like uh, a black and pure acetone. It uh, it goes really fast and stark. <laughs> I'm like, oop, that's a little too much. Yeah, yeah. I used to do all of my um, hand painting with just pure acetone, and it was it was brutal, man. <laughs> it is. It's so unforgiving. It is. Um, 
but it can also produce an interesting effect. Um, like I did a cartoon character and I wanted uh, like to show the stringy muscles of their arm. So I just brushed in the stroke of where the muscles will be and it had the, kind of a texture to it. Yeah, that's awesome. Or if you want something just like super saturated right now, like acetone. For <laughs> yes. Maybe that's why I like acetone because I'm so impatient. Ah, there you go. Uh, we have Brittany from Ugly Hand Dyes, who is uh, a master at the DA and hand painting. That it's basically just like watercolor. Yes, it does remind me a lot of watercolor. <laughs> this nice. <laughs> you can hear the squeaking. I feel it's like uh, dying at ASMR. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. We started a whole new thing. So that's just about perfect how I, how the, the shading is. So I can go over it like multiple times and get it really nice and soft, like a shadow. Mm -hmm. And you can just keep layering it and building it up until you get um, the right shade. I don't know Do how well it's showing up on here, but. Nice. Yeah. Uh, do you try to keep it away from the dye line or do you kind of go on it when you're when you're doing that as well i overlap it and if okay. your dyes are saturated enough you can't even tell that it's that i've gone over it it looks like it's just right up to the edge yeah i also feel like even if it does get on there it'll still add shadow where shadow would be anyways right uh, All right, so it's looking, it's looking pretty good. So I wasn't talking because I wanted to get that ASMR effect. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I'll do that in post and make a video. <laughs> <laughs> Emily says squeak. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, if it's if it squeaks, that's how you know you're doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's a the little shadow on there. Yeah, it's amazing like how much depth that just adds to it. I know, right? It takes it from like completely flat and just gives it a little something. I like yeah. doing it on on a lot of other stencils too. Die Forge Disc says, I feel like my discs are laughing when they do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's strip dyeing. <clears throat> um, the last thing that I would normally do is, um, like, I like to have my edges clean. So I'll go with a Q-tip. Uh, I'm not going to do it, but I'll go with the Q-tip and I'll like apply it to the edge so that it's nice and clean all the way around. Do you ever do spin dyeing or is that the way that you do that? Um, if it's a full round mm. design, like all the way around, I'll spin dye. But on these, I like to, I like to just apply it by hand. Wow. I didn't realize that. I'm retarded. <laughs> yes. That makes sense now. <laughs> Cause you don't want to dye where there is no other dye. Yeah, I try to make it look like the design is just like, I don't know, like it, it just goes up to the edge and then it's just make it real clean. So. Yeah. Nice. Well, <clears throat> if you like what you've been seeing here, audience, there are donation links to help Jillian out. Uh, so in the YouTube description, there's her PayPal and Venmo. So if you like what you see here and you learned something, she would greatly appreciate that to help her uh, continue this hobby. 
Uh, I didn't put anything on Instagram, but I will add those links as well. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate you doing this. Yeah, thanks for having me on. You guys should send me beer money, though. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she does like her beer. <laughs> Not coffee money, beer money. It's beer money. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Jillian while she's here? But yeah, it, I feel like that's uh, what you did is really simple. And um, it is ostensible, but you didn't do any like black outlining you just which is awesome yeah that's why i wanted to do it it's just about the the simplest stencil that you can do pretty much so i thought it was a really good yeah. um tutorial for beginners you can get a really cool effect and there's only really like three steps so dick dick dyer said thank you for this you were the most welcome <laughs> so yeah uh if you are one this after the fact and you want to follow along the dyer's guild does have a kit so you can follow along exactly with this um so if you're at the dyer's guild.co you can find that kit oh well let's see this dyer said how much would that cost to order from you i think he might want to buy it oh snap um <laughs> uh if you send me the disc um typically i'll charge 35 to 40 um for the die um but if you want to buy these um they'll be on my etsy like really soon <laughs> this nice. is a this is an abr and then i have um this is a destroyer and then the one i just did live is also a destroyer i think nice yep chris penna said great info always the best Oh, thanks. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> uh, Emily said, when are we starting a cat sanctuary? <laughs> Possible. Save all the cats. All right. All right. Well, I don't know if there's anything else that you wanted to touch on. Um, I don't think so. Um, I think that just about covers it awesome do you think you're going to do another clinic yeah i actually had a lot of fun i was way less nervous than i thought i would be so. that's, that's, <laughs> that's usually how it works out <clears throat> so yeah. that's great cool beans well uh thank you all for joining and watching live and asking questions uh this will be viewable after the fact this is the first time we're actually also streaming to Instagram, so I will have to see if that will actually post to the Instagram. But if not, it's always on YouTube and our website. Um, again, if you want to follow along exactly, there is a kit for this. Um, Jillian also gets a percentage of that, so that would also help her out. Um, and if you do do something with the kit, please, please share and tag Dyer's Guild and Jillian because I know I love uh, uh people doing or seeing what people have been doing and i know you would as well definitely if you guys do any drips make sure you let me know about it <laughs> yes uh ugly hand eyes said you rock oh thanks Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> all right well thank you all for joining this clinic this is the second one that we did so far but there'll be plenty more coming up uh the next one that i'm trying to work on is uh using ai to generate stencils which I'm excited for. Oh, well, I'll definitely be there for that one. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Absolutely. So, all right, guys, I'm going to stop streaming and we will talk to you later. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.